Hi and welcome to Second Wind, the show that gives you a second bite of last gen gaming. So with the imminent release of the PlayStation 4 and the beautiful looking Killzone Shadowfall, we thought we'd take you back to the beginning of the series. So on this episode we're looking at a game which is famously referred to as the most beautiful shooter on the PlayStation 2, Killzone. Set in some distant galactic future where mankind has conquered the stars, Killzone takes place in the Alpha Centauri system. The planet Helgan is a death world. Its inhabitants, the Helgast, are equally as rough, adapted to live in their deadly surroundings, and they are led by Brian Cox's enigmatic Fuhrer, with no analogues to the Third Reich at all whatsoever. After blitzkrieging the Sudetenland, oh, sorry, uh, the planet Vector, the Helgast forces are countered by the ISA and we're introduced to the first of our four main characters, Captain Jan Templer. The story in Killzone is actually quite a bit more complex than here are the bad guys, go and get the bad guys, and we're really treated to a three-dimensional tale of politics, war and betrayal. The Helgars themselves are brilliant enemies with their future Nazi hard sci-fi gear with a little bit of wolf brigade sprinkled in for good measure. Anybody can recognise them and there's even a little part of me that feels guilty blasting those sweet uniforms into oblivion. The central characters in Killzone feel pretty well fleshed out for a game of this era. Each character has their own unique gear and abilities and switching between them opens up routes which would otherwise be inaccessible. Yan is your rugged soldier type with the machine gun, you know the guy, vanilla milkshake. Next up is Luger, the Shadow Marshal. Luger is an assassin armed with a wicked little SMG and active camo. She's agile, stealthy and can see in the dark, but doesn't wear armour. The yin to her yang is Rico Velasquez. Now that name alone practically screams out fan service to the Aliens franchise, but then that gun just goes and confirms it. Finally, you've got my personal favourite, Hacker. I'll try not to give away too much story, but Hacker is ace. Able to use Hellgas technology without penalty and being able to hack security bots and alarms means this guy is the thinker's choice, but ultimately he lacks any real punch. He's also voiced by Sean Pertry, who I adore, so there is always that. My side, shit. Being able to switch between different characters who all have different attributes marks back to some of my favourite games of history, and this is something that is not done enough in current gen titles. Sure, these are pretty tired old archetypes, but the characters ooze appeal, and their chemistry together is really enjoyable. Bald fuck! They'll start ripping right off and shove it. I see. Over the course of the campaign, Yan and his compatriots will explore broken cities, lush green jungles, snowy mountains, and, and a lot more. All of it realised in what has to be some of the best looking visuals on the PlayStation 2. Just look at these graphics. The urban environments and bomb blasted buildings or the storm shattered dockyards, it all looks the business. There is a consistent style throughout the game which, like a filter, brings it all together with its washed out colour schemes and brilliant use of lighting. Every level, whilst really different, is still fun to play. You know, a lot of shooters suffer from that lull about halfway through the campaign. Killzone doesn't, it is fun all the way through. You might even find yourself going back to a previous level just because you had that much fun on it, you want to give it another go. Gunplay is seriously tight here, which is a good thing because there is a metric hectare of these Hellgast hammerheads that all need taking care of. Each gun is well balanced, but most likely you'll gravitate to the Hellgast assault rifle. It's the most common weapon in the game, and it's a solid choice no matter what you're trying to achieve. Be warned though, the guns flap about like a windsock in a hurricane, so short controlled bursts are the order of the day. There are a couple of features which are lovingly borrowed from Xbox's Star Shooter, but these are welcome additions and really help to bring the game up to modern standards. And they help to cement Killzone as PlayStation's dirtier, more brutal answer to Halo. Compared to the glamour of Time Splitters or the romance of Medal of Honor, Killzone really does stand alone as a brutal, gritty shooter on the PS2. The action set pieces are slick and in abundance. With the HD remaster released on disc on the PlayStation 3 and the original game being available as a download on PSN, 
there really is no better time for you to go out and grab this piece of PlayStation history. If you like science fiction or shooters, then you really owe it to yourself to go and pick up Killzone. As always, if you like the video, then do your sharing and all that business below. And don't forget, if you missed this game when it came out, catch it the second time round on Second Wind. Foxy Foxy.